Grüezi. You know what that means? That means hello in Swiss German. And today we're going to do an easy one. Easy, 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 if you have the material. A7 cheese Swiss fondue. Here we go. You need one of those. Huh? These are called caclon, which is actually a pot. And um, for normally you would use Emmental, Appenzeller, Tilsiter and uh, Gruyere. This is your traditional fondue. Now what do I do? Don't take me wrong for it, but I actually always buy one of these. These you can easily buy anywhere in most places, Europe, US, Canada, Asia, in specialty stores. And I use this as a base. These are not fast food. These are really, really good and they melt very nicely. So that is going to be the foundation of my fondue. But of course, I could serve it just like that, but that's not enough. No, I need more. Okay, so there, what do I do? Ingredients. Emmentaler. You know what? In America, they call this Swiss cheese. First time when I moved there in 82, I said Swiss cheese. They said Swiss cheese. I said Swiss cheese. I said, which one? Okay, never mind. That's just a gag. Then we have raclette cheese. Gruyere, Munster, a triple cream brie style truffled cheese from France, Fontina from Italy, and here Taleggio, and all of that is all we need today. We do need white wine. Um, normally I would use a Swiss wine, but those are not very easy to get, so Pinot Grigio is what I suggest very highly, and there will be plenty in the cheese, as well as some Kirsch, and yes, this one is imported from Switzerland. So, what else? You see a few pears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grate a little bit of the pears inside, then I need nutmeg, and then I need black pepper, and of course, ooh, le pain. We have two different ones. This is a baguette style, and that is a Pan d'antan, also white bread. Normally, I would buy them today like I did. You can actually age them, you can have them for two days, and we will slice these later into cubes, and we'll put them in a different bread basket, and then the fun will start. So this is it. Fondue a la Reto, a la Twisted Chef, Son of Grison. We will enjoy it today. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the bread. Now, as I say, knuckles, you learned that from Gordon Ramsay, you should know. So, that's it. Did I say that? Yeah, actually, I did. All right, so we do it with this one. I take about one centimeter or a little bit more uh, slices, and then, not to continue to bore you, same with here. Okay, I think you get the drift by now. And then, I choose two breads because a lot of people like that. So we cut these in half, and I would say, this is a good size. Uh, here I take this uh, package that I showed you before. I'm sorry, this is always has some uh, residual liquid that needs to be done. And I leave that here. I'm not going to heat it up yet. And let me show what will follow so that you understand. So let me explain the cheeses like before, but now I grated them because honestly, next time if you want to see if I grate them, I can do that for you, but it's just a bit ludicrous. Here uh, we have the Fontina from Italy, Northern Italy. Raclette cheese, which I'm sure you can be Swiss or can be French. Then we have our Gruyere and our Emmental. And I, I forgot to give you the measurements. So this is 180 of Gruyere. This is 125 of Emmental or Swiss cheese. This is 100 of the uh, Fontina and about 85 of the Raclette cheese. And the reason I measure that has to do with the fact that we have to combine these flavors. We cannot just throw cheese in a pot. Uh, some are stronger, some are lighter in their taste. So you don't want to overpower on the power, whatever. Plus there's wine coming. Here we have the fantastic Taleggio. This is a precious cheese for us here. Uh, has to be imported from Italy. Not a cheap experiment. 45 grams of that. Here we have the uh, burgundy cream with black truffle. I only took 50 gram of that reason B. This is a very strong cheese. It melts very quickly and has a strong truffle taste so we don't want to overpower that. And last but not least the Munster. Also 65 gram of that because the Munster equally is a cheese that 
uh, has quite a lot of uh, strong taste. So we combine these flavors while the, the Fontina, for example, uh, doesn't have much taste really, neither does the Emmental. So we will show you now how I sequence that into my pot while I fire up the base of the package that we showed you before. And then we're gonna add whatever is needed to complete the task. So here we are. Let's wait until this will cook. This garlic, garlic clove, half a garlic clove. And I do put that, I don't know if you can see this, I put that around the pot. Um, you do that first, not when the cheese is already in there. So the garlic is inside. Now we keep on stirring and this is slowly melting. I will show you this in a second so that you have an idea. And these packages, they're really, really good. Uh, they're manufactured in Switzerland. I have never seen them from anywhere else really, but uh, sure they exist. But this is, um, they're actually extremely good, but they're also thick. As you can see now, this is already thickening and I took it off the light fire because um, this stuff cooks very, really fast and you don't want this to bur burn, you know, burn and smell of burnt cheese. While I'm putting this back on now, again on low heat, I keep stirring and now I'm going to add some wine. I don't have a specific measurement for that. This is up to you because the wine taste is natural in a, in a fondue, but you know, some don't like it, some like more of that. Uh, just don't forget it becomes more liquid the more wine you put. So I put about one and a half deciliters for now. And I keep on stirring my pot and see my mixture here. And the next cheese we will add to this will be the more low, uh, how do I say that? <laughs> low sharp cheeses which is your raclette and your fontina so i can put them both into the pot at the same time no problem it's not like we have to separate them there are cheeses that we have to do at the end but these two guys they're fine and keep on stirring but kirsch has to go inside you can see from the shot glass not as much little bit here we go Mix again, and now basically I can see that the Fontina and the Rockle cheese, they are already melting nicely. There we go. All the procedure, do not cook it on high heat. Oops, keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. I don't want to have this fondue too liquid. I personally don't like that, a lot of people do actually like it more thinner I don't and now comes the pride of Switzerland the Gruyere and the Emmentaler and now you can tell we're having a load of cheese in here already I gotta move this away so and again I leave it on the on the fire so it can slowly cook and what I need to do here is to add again more wine because this is a, a lot of cheese. Again, it's not for the faint hearted this kind of fondue because it's creamier and more heavy than most of the normal fondues that you will get in a restaurant. But then again, let's be adventurous and let's do the right thing. Okay, now I'm waiting here. I put some more wine and soon I'm going to taste some and then I will explain to you what will happen with the final cheeses. It is sticky already and it doesn't have to be like a mozzarella pie so don't worry if it doesn't take any strings out of it. It shouldn't. Stringy cheese in a fondue is not to my knowledge an original trade. I'm gonna hide the fire a little bit just to make sure that we get going because I have a guest coming soon and I don't want him to wait or us to wait in general. There we go. 
another little bit of kirsch now we can add some pepper which we'll do at the end anyhow and there is my fondue cooking i would assume it's pretty yummy by now but I, as i already made a mess before with cheese in my face i don't want to do it twice there we go all right now my next one is the taleggio taleggio 2 is not too aggressive a little bit but quite balanced nice cheese hard to get if you're not well the salsa somewhere the Europeans of course they have all the luck in the world because they have all this in front of their doorsteps so here we go and there's very little left to do before we let this cook and now we're gonna add our monster not the monster the monster <laughs> Muster, okay how do you say but I think I'm gonna reduce the quantity a little bit because I think this fondue is already pretty heavy but you know put liquor in it man it will dissolve the grease of it keep going keep going keep going down on the heat yeah and now last but not least and then the only thing uh, addition I do is if it's too cheesy I put more wine I add my triple cream with truffles that was the last hooray a little bit more musket a little bit more pepper and that to my humble opinion is a hell of a good fondue there we go voila now all i care about is these people hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. oh god no that not, not this guy I'm again really come on oh. Uh, well, subscribe, <laughs> blink, link, <laughs> comment, come and see us again. Cheers, bye. Cheers. Mm. Mm.